hello everyone and welcome to the fourth part of this tutorial series in this one i'll be showing you guys how to better structure your redox react application so um in this video we'll be talking about ways to optimize your code and to reduce common errors so the first thing we'll be talking about and one more thing from the previous video when i talked about call in the repo i added some explanatory text here so you could read this to get another to get an understanding of why I'm using call um, effect over here. So yeah, the first thing we'll be talking about here would be um, this. So for instance, now in this, if you notice something in our actions, we are copying and pasting our actions over here. We copied and pasted this one. We also did this one. And in the reducer tool, we also did the same thing. We are copying and pasting every single action we are dispatching. So the first question or the question that could arise or the problem with this approach is that, for instance, if we make a mistake in our spelling, so I omit an S at the end. If we make a mistake in our spelling for like fetch user success, if you noticed here, the user, um, you never get the user in your Redux application. And if I come to this, let's check the Redux dev tools. So if you can notice the fetch user action is dispatched, then the fetch user success action is dispatched. But if you notice here, the an extra S is being omitted at the back. So you might be asking, so why don't I get this? Um, when they don't, why don't I get the user over here? But if you come over to our reducer, our reducer expects an action with this fetch user success with two with double S's at the end. So the your reducer is not um, um, able to handle this particular action because of a spelling mistake. So now we are humans and we could make mistakes. So one way to actually one way to actually um, prevent this type of um, stuff from happening is to use something called action creators. But before we use action creators, the first thing I want to do would be to um, have all this my um, action types in a particular file and they are going to be constants so this is what i simply mean so i'm going to create a new file first of all i'm going to name this um, action types the js and over here i'm going to be copying all the actions so update channel name would be the first action to copy so i'll put it in the constants So, the next one would be, and also export them immediately. The next one would be for fetch user success and fetch user field. So, I'm just gonna duplicate this fetch user success and the final one will be for fetch user field and I think there should be one more the fetch user action okay so since we have this exported so the benefit of this is that if i make them um, if i assign the values of these actions into variables whenever i import them okay i could even do it quickly in a reduce over here whenever i import them i'm importing the variable and not the string so i can always change the string here and it won't affect our redux application because our redux application is just going to be referring to this variable so I'll save this and make use of this in our reducer. Okay, so in our reducer, I could bring this down. Okay, so in our reducer, I'll be importing imports all as action types from action types. So over here, I would be 
instead of calling this string i'll be calling the constant so i could say action types dot update channel name the same thing for this action and you can see the advantage here with the help of intellisense we can just um, press control and space bar to see the list of possible values so the next one will be fetch user success and the final one would be action types dots I'm supposed to see fetch user field but I'm not seeing it so let's see why export cons fetch user field okay I just scroll up fetch user field so you see now we've eliminated the possibility of any typographical error in our spellings so for instance now if I head back to the action types over here and I remove the s like I did previously it will still fetch it will still fetch the user because we are referring to the variable over here and not why why let's see why let's see what is actually dispatching fetch user success it's supposed to let me reload the application and see okay so let's head back to fetch user success fetch user field and let's check our sagas okay so we also have to update it in our sagas over here so yes we also have to update it in our sagas but i'm not going to do it that way i'm going to introduce something to you guys called action creators so from the name because you can see over here we are dispatching one with a single s but over here we need the one with the double s for it to pass the user as a payload so i'm going to be talking about action creators then we'll come back to this so let's just go back and confirm if it's working before we continue cool it's working so i'm going to be talking about action creators so one more thing to notice from this is in our sagas.js file we were actually copying this whole stuff over here there's a better way to actually do this instead of copying this action object everywhere so we use something called action creators and from the name they are just used to create actions so they are functions that returns actions so one of the benefit of this is just to have kind of like a single file where we have all our whole actions that we can dispatch so this is going to help um, us organize our code better so action creators so over here the first thing i'm going to do would be to import those action types because we are not going to be um, using the strings directly like we did so i'm going to import the so i could even use something like this to import from action types so instead of the asterisk i could just directly you can see with control space i can see the um exported um, variables so the first one i'm going to use is fetch user success fetch user field and update channel name code so now let's create our first um, action creator so like i told you an action creator is just a function that returns an action object so over here i'm going to do this stuff so for fetch user success i'm going to cut it for now then over here i'm going to do export const um, fetch user success i'm going to be using the um, arrow function notation so I'll return I'm gonna return what an object so 
instead of we don't have the data here so i'm going to do something like this so user should be user i'm going to explain what i'm doing so why is it giving me this error okay no errors so like i told you guys that an action creator is just simply a function that returns um an action so over here now whenever we call this fetch user success function it is going to return this particular action so the benefit of doing this is that we don't have to have all this whole boilerplate logic scattered all over our application so when we call fetch user success we get this action so the next one i'm going to be creating would be for and you can see something look at the payload so this fetch user success needs um you have to pass in it, uh, you have to pass in an argument which is the user so whenever we call it i'm going to show you how to make use of it but let's just continue so the next one will be what fetch user field and i'm not going to be doing it this way i'm going to be using the shorter syntax for this so instead of having the return keyword i'm going to do this So this is um, one of the syntax of arrow functions. So this, like I explained in the previous video, the parenthesis here signifies that you want to return this particular object. So it's shorter than actually doing this. So you can see fetch user field. So what, are, what do I want to pass here? What do I expect? I expect you to pass me the error. Then over here, I'm going to take in the error. So we have fetch user success and fetch user field. But now we've not made use of these um, action types. So for the action types, I'm just going to remove this. And it's going to make use of this. Same thing with fetch user um, field. Fetch user field. And the final one would be for update channel name so it's going to be update channel name and what is it going to expect you guessed it right channel channel name so it's going to be update channel name and you can see with the help of intellisense if we misspell this, it's going to show us an error that this variable name does not exist. So that is one way of um, reducing the possibility of this type of errors. So we have our action creators here, update channel name, fetch user success, and fetch user field. So now in our sagas, we are going to be calling the functions and not the manual objects so over here the first thing i'll do would be to come and import them so i could say import from from where i'm going to import it from actions so the first action i'm going to be using is what fetch user success and the second one is fetch user field so remember what the put effect does. It's, remember what effects are in Redux Saga. They are just instructions to your middleware. And the put effect, remember it um, instructs the middleware to dispatch the action that is passed as the argument. So instead of manually writing the object over here with type something, I'm just going to do what? Call this function. So it, this approach makes our code cleaner. So I'm going to be calling fetch user success and you can see it requires an argument called user and what is the user the user is stored in response dots data cool so the next one we're going to be doing would be for fetch user field and i'm going to say fetch user field what does he expect he expects what the error so you can see our code is more cleaner as compared to um the previous one and one thing we can also update here would be this um watch user saga 
I could come here and import from action action types and what am I gonna import fetch user so over here I'll just call okay I could just remove this cool fetch user or if you want to make it more descriptive we could say so I could come here and do it doesn't matter action types dot fetch user you can see there are different ways so whenever you see this you say take latest take this latest action type which is fetch user and called the fetch user saga so you can see our code is working right now we replaced the previous way of um, passing the passing the um, objects manually but now we are calling the fetch user success function so this is possible because of action creators so like i told you action creators are just functions that return an action so whenever you call this function it returns this guy over here and you also have to pass it the argument that is if it requires an argument so for fetch user success it requires a user and in my sagas over here i passed in what the user which is response.data so this action is going to put it in the payload here and my reducer is going to get it over here can you see action.payload.user so it's still the same way as the previous code we've um, written but this just makes it cleaner and um, reduces the possibility of um, errors arising from typos so we are making progress here so the next thing would be so this whole stuff is called action creators so the next thing we would be doing would be to implement it in other areas of our application and if we go back to our application let's see in our settings component we called we called what we called um this guy over here fetch user but there's a short there's a short form of actually doing this so for our map dispatch to props let me see for our map dispatch to props we can actually pass in an object over here let me try this if it's okay but before we do that let me just import the actions we want to dispatch so I'll head over to the top and import can import it over here import okay, let me do that down doesn't matter but I'll do import um, from so we'll go back one step and we head to the state folder then we go to the actions file so what do I want to import here we have two actions we have the update channel name and the fetch user so I'm going to import just to be sure update channel name and fetch user success okay no and fetch user so that means in our actions because you can see here this guy over here is just the action for fetch user and we've not created the action um, over here so I'm gonna do that quickly we just need that fetch user action in our um, actions file we don't really need it in the reducer because it really does nothing it just executes and redux saga takes it and um, calls the corresponding saga so I'm going to do fetch user and I can import it over here fetch user 
then and you can see this one doesn't require any additional data so there is no payload so I'm going to remove this guy over here and just put an empty parenthesis so if I, uh, if I come back here I can have fetch user and we can confirm that it's been exported yes you can see it's been exported over here so one thing to note here instead of having all this um, bulky code for your map dispatch to props you can actually directly call it this way so I could say um, on updates channel name then I could call updates channel name then the next one would be I'm going to explain what I'm doing next one will be on fetch user so it's just it's not a must you add this on in front of it you can just um, call it directly but I'm just differentiating it that this one is the action I'm passing as props and this one is the this, the one by the right is from the action creator so on fetch user should be what fetch user so I'm just assigning this is what I want to be passed as props this is the action creator so now when I let me just comment this thing out then instead of update channel name I'm going to put on update channel name so over here we could have the same name we could leave them as the same name over here if I do this like this it should still work but I'm just trying to make a difference as in make differentiate them so on update channel name then over here I'll pass it here as on update channel name so we know that this one is the props so the same thing I'm going to do it for on fetch user and one more thing if this works I'm going to pull out this um, action from this settings um, component because I don't think it really makes sense to fetch the current user inside these settings I think we should fetch the current user from the app component so every other component can just have it whenever the app component loads we don't have to wait for settings to load to get the current user but let's just make this work so on fetch user I'll go up and I'll do the same thing so I can minimize this on fetch user so I'll save and check if it works so this works let's check if this works cool it works and you can see how we reduce the boilerplate from this down to this so we just passed in the object directly and this is possible because of what action creators so as long as you whenever you um, call these actions and for instance let's go to content okay update channel as long as you pass in the right argument as long as you pass in the right argument this code over here is going to work so you've seen how we've reduced the code from this down to this just because of action creators so one more thing I'm going to do before I recap is um, let me take this guy out of the settings because I told you the reason why I would not want it in the settings I'm going to put it in the app component so or I'll leave you guys to actually do that so what you guys should do would be to take out this fetch user from the settings component and call it in the app component so you create your map dispatch to props over here and the on the use effect hook or if you're using classes you call it in your component did mount so I think it's better for it to be loaded here so whenever your app component loads um, first of all you can get the current user from this so now this is just um, a basic improvement to the previous um, code we've written so one more thing or let me just do a quick recap so we created an action and one thing yeah so I could remove this success over here and save 
and let's see if this stuff is going to work. I removed the S. Cool. Can you see it's working? Your um, Redux application doesn't care about the string. It just cares about the variable name. So this is just basic tips on how to like optimize your code to reduce the possibilities of some errors that could come from typos. Can you see the string that was actually dispatched did not have an S, but we eliminated it depending on this string by assigning, it, assigning this action to a variable. Cool. So we created action types constants just to hold these um, values over here. So I'm going to put that back quickly. So we created action types and we created something called action creators. So action creators are just um, um, functions that return an action object. So you can see all of them here, they are returning an action object. So cool. So I'm going to just quickly make this. Cool. You can see just one line if you use the ESC's notation. So you can do that for the rest, but I'll just leave it. So, um, the next thing I'm going to be doing, okay, yeah, so you can see the um, basic construct of an action creator, how it just makes your code cleaner. And we saw the advantage here whereby we moved from this down to this. You can see it's a whole lot cleaner and better. Then we also made use of it in our sagas file. So in our sagas file, we are calling the function that expects an argument user the same thing for the error so we are just making our code um cleaner so that's action creators for you so now there's something i want you guys to i don't know if you noticed it um in our reducer over here we have kind of like two unrelated data so channel name and user they don't really have a direct they could have a relationship but in terms of managing your um store or your state i think it's better to separate this channel name from this user because in your user you could have um, a list of all users list of the current logged in user and for channel name you can have the list of all the whole channel so in redux you can actually break down your reducers into um, multiple reducers kind of like to just have your application um, um, state separated so for instance now imagine if we if this application had um, kind of like an authentication system or authentication states that has to store the user's token and to also check if the user is authenticated if we add this particular um, data here into this state you can see that our states will keep growing larger and larger and even unrelated states, putting them together might not be the best um, idea or the best option. So we can actually break down your reducer into multiple reducers. But there's something to note. Only one reducer has to be sent to the store. So I'll show you how to do that. So for this project, what I'm going to do would be I'll break down all this stuff. So we'll have a state for channel is that oops what did i do so we we'll have a file a folder for channel and we'll have a second folder for user so it's kind of like a way to separate your state so if you had authentication in this application will have a different a different folder for auth if you have um a separate um state for managing localization data or something like that we'll have a separate folder for that so instead of bundling all our whole states into one object and make it very big we can actually break it down into smaller um into smaller objects so i'll do the same thing i'll do something for user and i'll do the same thing for channel so what i'm going to do here would be to 
So for channel, I'll quickly create So let me just close all this to manage space. So I'll create action types. Actions. Channel does not have saga, so I'll leave that. So I'll also create a new file. Reducer.js. And I think that will be it for now. So I'll do the same thing for users. Or I could just I could just copy this. Into users Our application is going to break, but would update that. So for the actions for Users, I'm going to, for channel, I mean, I'm going to do this, cut this guy out and put it in the channel action. And imports. this over here then for for the action types for channel I'm just going to quickly cut this over here and put it in channels action type so I'm kind of like repeating the same thing but for two different um, states objects so the next thing i'll be doing would be i'll do a recap of what i'm doing currently but if you're following you get what i mean so for my reducer over here i'm going to copy okay i could just copy the whole file then i'll remove what i want reducer.js for the channel then i'll delete all this and delete this stuff because i don't need it then for the action type i'm going to just remove everything here so this is a small applica application and using redux might be an overkill but i want you guys to also imagine um, this application to be a very large application and you'd see the benefit of managing states this way so we have that for so I'll go back to the user reducer and I'll remove anything that concerns channel name. So I'll remove this. Cool. I'll remove this. So let's cross check what we've done. So for channel, I have the actions of the channel name. That's just the current action that the channel state has. Then we have the action type, cool, and also have the reducer. So they're okay. So it has channel name and this. So channel name could have probably extra stuff like all channels. And this channel name could be in an object or all. It could have um, something like groups, for instance, now. Groups could be an array of different um, channel um, groups inside this channel or something like that. So your states could grow bigger and bigger as your application grows. So we have the reducer of our year. So I think this, it doesn't have a saga file because we're not making use of any asynchronous code. So now the next thing we'd be doing would be to export this stuffs. So inside our okay inside our store inside our store.js file now we have multiple reducers we have the reducer for the channel state and we also have the reducer for the user state but there's a very very important rule for redux only one only one reducer 
should be responsible for updating our store. That is a rule of Redux. Only one reducer should be able to update our store. So the reason behind this is that so there won't be any confusion if multiple reducers are updating our store or if there's duplicate um, state data. So that is a rule we have to follow. But now we have two reducers. We have the reducer for the channel and we have the reducer for the user. How do we go about this? Well, there is a simple function that helps us with that from Redux and it is called combine reducers. So what this does is that it's going to combine this object over here with this second object to give us one single object. So you can see from the name combine reducers. So from there we can simply do something like this. Um, we can name it root reducer. Should be equals to combine reducers and let's see what he expects. Can you see? It expects an object, reducer map object. So we're going to be passing in an object over here. An object of what? The pre um, two reducers we've created. So we have to go over here. Okay, we have them, we've exported them. So I'm going to come here and since there is no longer reducer here, so I'm going to do channel reducer should be imported from channel slash reducer. Then the next one is what? User reducer. It should be imported from where? user so i hope this is correct yes it is so now we want to combine these two reducers into one reducer so we want to combine what two different objects into one object and that is what the combine reducer function does so now we can give it a name so i can say channel should be equals to what channel reducer then the next reducer should be what? User should be equals to what? User reducer, cool. So over here we do what? We update the reducer from the previous one. So cool. So we can save this and we'll go to our application and let's see. Okay, states actions or JS. No short file action or JS. Okay, so according from our imports in our settings, the JS file, let's check our imports. So we had, we are trying to import from this particular stuff and it does not exist anymore. So what we can do here would be. To do something like this so states channel and states user probably I'll also um, update this stuff in the index.js file I'll create an index.js file to make this work so the same thing saga states sagas there is no um, saga like that. So I'm going to go to our store.js and also update that. So we could also do something like that for the sagas whereby we do this kind of, we have kind of like a root saga. So let me see if I'll do that now. Let me check. So we have sagas.js. We've exported this. Okay. So we can also do that. So let me see, user saga. So we can have our root saga over here. Uh, but this file would not be nice. So I can see root.
to root saga and i would have to import let's see yield all i'm going to explain what i'm doing so all i have to import all from okay i have redox saga over here i have to import all from okay no it's in the effects I have to import something from the effects so okay so all I'm going to say um, user saga so did I do it correctly okay the spelling Should I call it? Let me check. Okay, let's leave it like this. Then in our saga over here, what would be running would be the root saga instead of the user saga. Okay, it's also giving me. So I have to import this saga from user slash sagas. Cool. So I'll save this and let's go to our application and see. I know I did a lot of changes, but I'm going to explain. So, okay, before I do this, let me just comment this out and use the user saga. Then when it works out, updates. This code. So yes, now we can see if we head over to our console.log, there are no errors in our console.log, but we don't have access to we can't see our state's name. We can't see flying hawk over here. Let's head over to the Redux store and check if it's actually there. So I head over to states and can you see the channel name? It has flying hawk and user object is also there. But why is it not displaying in our application here? If you notice something over here, previously we just had flying, we just had channel name and user. But if you can see something here, Redux creates a new object for us. Okay, let me show you what that means. So over here, we are combining the reducers. So now, previously, if we did not combine the reducer, we could just access state.channel name. But now, we, are, we created a new object that's going to assign the channel reducer to this channel property and the user reducer to this user property. So to be able to use them, we have to go down one more step. So this is what I mean. So instead of saying state.user, because we have this extra property over here. We are now combining them. So if I hover to reach reducer, I think we should see it. Can you see the reach reducer? So instead of states, we have to assess it as states.channel.channel name. The same thing with user. The state.user.user. We have to go in um, one more step deep. So this is how you have to do it when you make use of um, combine reducer. The same thing with this. So state.user.user. This might be confusing, but this second user is the um, current user, while this user over here is the state object of that user reducer. So this is how to actually access them. So if I save, we should see them appear year and year and year. And let's see. Cool. But it's not appearing in app, and we know how to solve that very quickly. We can actually do that. So if I go to app, we we'll do what? State dot what? Channel dot channel name. So this is how you can have multiple layers of combination for your reducers. But this is just the very first step. We just combined. We combined these two reducers to become one. So the rule of thumb here is that your store must have only one um, reducer. 
so that is how to make this work so we are done so before i do a recap let me just check if i get this to work first of all roots saga i don't I think i'll put a parenthesis Okay, seems like I'll put the parentheses over here. So, let me see. If it doesn't work, cool, it's working. So, Leon Graham. So, let me just show you what I did. So, over here, we could have a root saga. So, you might be asking, why do we need a root saga? So in this application, we just requested the user from the backend API, but in a real complex application, the channel, the channel um, um, details can, would be fetched from an online API. And that online API, you'd, um, it's an asynchronous code. So this channel state will also have its saga.js. So over here in the store, we could have multiple um, sagas. We could have the user saga, the channel saga, the authentication saga. So we can combine all of them here into one root saga and we run them here. We pass it to the saga middleware.run and your application works as expected. So in this video, I showed you guys how to like better structure your React Redux application. We broke down the states from one reducer function to two um, states groups. So we have the channel and the user groups. And I talked about action creators. And action creators are just simply functions that does what? That returns an action. So the advantage of having them do this stuff is so you won't have to be copying and pasting this object because it could lead to um, typographical errors. And we solved that problem by creating what? action types action types is not having this constant here is not a redox thing it's just a normal um, optimization technique whereby you assign your variables to constants so you don't have the spelling mistakes um, error we had so the main redox stuff here to note is the actions um, action creator over here so we connected our application using action creators and in our sagas we made use of what the action creators instead of calling the object the same thing we also did in our settings component in our settings component because of action creators we took our code from this to this so those are the benefits of action creators so in this video we learned how to better optimize our project and structure it better and in the next and final video we'll be talking about would we'll be doing um, redux without react so we'd create a file and i'll show you everything we've done in this application would we'll be doing it without react so we're going to learn raw redux in the next video so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one